Hello, my name is Kelsey Day, and I'm the Queen of the South. I've been spending a lot of time crying today over our nation and all that is happening here that is not of God, because we really need to repent. The whole nation needs to repent in order to avoid judgment from God from landing on our land. I'm one that is told by the God of Abraham that we're, we're in trouble. And even though that we have believers in Jesus here, they're not reigning right now. In God, we trust. When you say that, people look at you sideways. Like, really? That should be on our money? And it should be. And we should. In God, we trust. We did when we established this nation. Our silver used to have value. And we had money that had value. And now we have paper that has no value in the value in it can be taken away. They're putting us in trillions of dollars worth of debt that we can never pay. I am the one that's on this horse. I'm gonna bring it up to you close so you can see. There's a woman that's on a horse. And if you look, she has palms and she has a torch. This is a white horse, even though you can't tell it in silver. It's the first white horse of Revelations that rides. We could very well have initiated the seven years into the tribulation period. But I can tell you that God has left it up to you, not me. Because that I can ride a horse and it means nothing. I can say that I'm the queen of the South and I may not be anything but an actress that's an allegory to play the part of the queen of the South who then takes my place. But the queen of the South is to bring souls into the kingdom of God. That's why she's wearing white. That's why she, she is on a white horse. See here, there's the palms. There I am. And there's the sun behind me. Like on the coin. I have a torch in my arm. You can't see it in here, but there's a torch there. It's part of my icon that I'm using for my star of Jesus to promote the jewelry in order to bring souls into the kingdom of God using it. I need to get it on the market and I haven't made any money yet at that, but it's what I want to do to establish Bible studies in the name of Jesus and to promote Jesus throughout the world. I can always use help from somebody. But I'm going to focus on scriptures and getting you to understand what's happening and what's going to happen. In Hosea, I'm going to take you to 6.2. Let's start with the first verse, in fact. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He has bitten, but he will bind us up. We need to be healed. Then it goes on to say, after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Well, we have not lived in God's sight yet. And three days actually stands for 3,000 years. One day is 1,000 years. When you go to the New Testament, it says that one day is the same as 1,000 years, and 1,000 years is the same as the day in the eyes of the Lord. So we entered into the 3,000 years in 1998. Also, in 1948, all the Israelites, the Judeans, started returning to Israel. And the temple, Jesus pointed to it, and he said one stone would not stand on the other of that temple. And 70 years later, not one stone stand on the other. That temple has to be rebuilt in Israel. 
for Jesus to return. And Israel has to cry out for seven days over the, the crucifixion of Jesus before he returns. So even though that some pastors have said tomorrow Jesus could come, that's not so. I know what the scriptures say about his return. I do know that you can die tomorrow and that you need to get your soul right with God so that whenever you come before him on the judgment day, you don't go to hell. That is the reason why you want to get right with God now and not wait. He talks about the unfaithful wife. Well, you know, the Lord unto me that go love a woman and be loved of a friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. He told Hosea to take an unfaithful wife. This was supposed to be an example. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said to her, thou shalt abide with me many days and thou shalt not play the harlot Thou shalt not be with another man, so will I also be for thee. He made a promise to be faithful to her and asked her not to be unfaithful. <clears throat> for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without out the image, without ephod, ephod, without a uh, seraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord thy God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. We are in the latter days now. The third thousand years started in 1999. So for 21 years already, We've been in the last days. Now, when the seven-year period starts, depends on you. I say this because that God has put me as an actress, an allegory, saying I could very well make you the queen of the south. And the start of the seven-year tribulation can begin. Or I can take you out and replace you later. But you can bring a lot of souls into the kingdom of God for me. So that's what my job is, is to get you to pray, to get you to repent. I'm wearing a trash bag if you're wondering what this was on. It's Yom Kippur now, Day of Atonement. It's a time for all of us to cry and pray to God. You know, throw dirt on ourselves if we want to, whatever makes you feel dirty because that before God you are. And you need to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the things I did that I should not have done, that I violated commandments of the God, the Ten Commandments. Stop being so prideful. What other people do as far as their sin has nothing to do with yours. And whenever you're before God, you won't be able to point the finger at somebody else. It's all on you. Today is the day to get right with God to put a, a trash bag on. And then this is not the day of atonement like young Kippur. You can still put a trash bag on and spend a day in prayer, you know, asking God to forgive you. It doesn't matter when God sees it. And he will bless you, you know, for doing that. Telling God, you know, how awful your nation has been, how your leaders have done, other people have done as well as yourself and pray for everybody, including yourself. This is the day that you need to. 
you know, Hosea's wife was unfaithful and went off and did whatever. And then whenever the shoes thrown back at him, he took her in and he took care of her, brought her back, and then she was faithful. Well, this is true of the Jews, those that did not see Jesus as the Messiah. But you know, Jesus actually tells us all of this stuff is going to happen in, 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 in Matthew. I was in prayer today asking Jesus, asking him to lead me again, you know, to what he wanted me to read. And I opened up the book. It was to the 20 of Matthew, it's the 21st, I'm going there right now. Matthew 21. It's a time in which he starts telling the, the people, well, their teachers, you know, when your teachers are so prideful, they know more than you, and they think you should keep your mouth shut, that you don't have a voice, that you can't do anything for God, that is satanic. Because that God wants you winning people into the kingdom of God. However you can do it is the question. You know, everybody has different kinds of talent. God will use your talent to bring people into the kingdom of God. The way in which you were made, not me. Right now, I'm doing what I need to do to tell you what to do. But he tells his leaders. And what he says is not so nice. It's a whoa, whoa, whoa to them. He says, who Whoever exalts himself shall be abased. And he shall humble himself shall be exalted. Now, I may say that I'm the queen of the south, but whenever I say that, I'm well aware that I put myself in danger. Because I am a willing martyr for Jesus. Nobody has tried to play this part because they know what kind of danger they can put themselves in by being such. Also, it, it says that she's wise. And I was wondering, whenever God found me that, I said, I wasn't a straight A student. I'm not wise. Why would you pick me? And then I pointed, I pointed blindfoldly in the scriptures and the point, the, uh, my, my finger was pointed at the scripture that said that you can't get into the kingdom of God unless you come as a child. That means that you're willing to learn. God wants people that are open-minded, willing to learn, that don't think they know everything. Have you ever been with somebody who never shuts their mouth? They don't listen to anything you say. They're full of everything that they know they want to share with you and they listen to nothing. Well, God doesn't want that kind of child either. It says here, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer them that are entering to go in. Yes, there's a whole lot of people that have been taken to hell within the worship centers that they belong to. When your worship center is establishing hatred, prejudice, and makes you want to go kill somebody instead of love others and do good things for others, then you have the wrong leaders in power. Also, whenever they know more than everybody else and everybody else is going to hell and they feel that it's okay if you go kill another person because they're not you, that's prideful. The truth is that God is the judge, not you. You don't make that decision. Your, your job is to bring them into the kingdom of God, to share with them, to share love, you know, understanding. I've gone into the mosque to pray with the women that are Muslim. I've gone to the synagogue and I've spent time there with the Jews. 
I've been to many different kinds of Christian churches, including Messianic, this combination of Jews and Christians. I've been to the Mormon church and Jehovah Witness. I know all the prejudices even against the way international. I know what the hatred is that is built out there, but I don't have that. None of it belongs to me because I am a child of God. I'm under the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he says that he is the judge, not me. That means the Muslims and the Jews, when it comes time, it's up to God. It's up to Jesus about their salvation. However, I am responsible to share what I know is in fact the way to heaven, regardless as to whether they're going to heaven or hell, nor would I have a right to kill them because it says in the Ten Commandments, thou shall not kill. Yes, you have a right of defense. If you're going to be killed, you have a right of defense. That's no question. Then it depends. It depends on what God tells you at the time it's happening. Jesus could have stopped his crucifixion at any time. He had the power to do that. But he had to pay the price for you and me to make it into the kingdom of God. And on the cross, he did it. His blood had to be shed for our sin. And that's what he did. And he's not coming back until it's time. But we have to pave the way and want him to return. Do you think if God sent his son to save us, that he would send his son back anytime soon if we crucified him? No, he's not going to. He's not going to until we're in prayer crying over the crucifixion that happened to Jesus. In here it says, woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, who devour wi widows' houses. And for pretense of long prayer, therefore, ye shall have greater damnation. Uses long prayers in order to get more pay from the widows who have lost their husbands. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and then he is made, ye make him twofold more of a child of hell than yourself. So you have to see what kind of proselytes are being made of these people. Are they really bringing in souls into the kingdom of God? Are people magnifying the Lord and, and have good home lives and serving God in their worship centers and love, kindness and giving? And if so, I tell you that no matter what religion you are, how can you just determine that someone is not worthy and automatically kill them? I have known Christians that thought that all the Islamic Jews deserve to die. And I have known Islamics who think all the Christians deserve to die. That's why we have, you know, killings on both sides. It has been. But we're family, we should not be killing each other. And we have enough in common to share, to become friends. They are told in the Quran that Jesus has the next near position to God. They don't know the teachings of Jesus and they need to. This was some of his teaching right here. He was telling the Jews what they had done wrong. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you encompass the sea and so forth. I, I went through that part. Woe to you, ye blind guides, and say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever 
swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. He fools and blind for whether it is greater the gold or the temple that sacrificed the gold. Whosoever shall swear by the altar is nothing, but whosoever swears by the gift that is upon it, he is guilt, guilty. The gift that's on it, the sacrifice that's on it, that would be guilty. Fools and blind, for whether it is greater the gift or the altar that sacrifices the gift, that's a question. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar swears by it, and by all things thereon. Whosoever swears by the temple swears by it, and by him that dwells therein. And he shall swear by heaven, swears by the throne of God, and by him that sits thereon. Whosoever, who unto you, scribes, woe unto you, scribes, and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought to have been done, not to leave the other undone. This is true in our courtrooms now. You pay for the outcome to your lawyer whether you're guilty or you're not, justice is waning. Our voting systems have been corrupted now. We don't have in power who we voted for because our votes were not counted. You blind guides, which strain at the gnat and swallow the camel. Well, if you swallowed the camel, you'd be choking. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter. It's just the outside, because now he's going to talk about the inside of that cup. And platter. The outside of the cup and platter, but they are full of extortion and excess. Extortion excess exists in our government. We have rich at the top that now think they're in charge of all the poor that are in this country and can put us in debt slavery now of trillions of dollars that never will be paid. Our country is in trouble. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. For you are like unto the white sepulchers, that's the places in the graveyard, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you are outwardly, outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. The question is, if I've been the queen of the South for 21 years, and I've told many preachers this, not one of them has come to me asking questions. Not one of them ever thought maybe she might be the queen of the South, I need to talk to her. Not one of these preachers really want the queen of the South to appear either in their time frame, because Jesus would be coming back and then the seven year tribulation period would begin. But can you stop it? Can you determine God, his watch and when he's gonna do things? No, you can't, but you certainly can look at the times. The children now are pretty much in charge. You know, all I have to do is say something bad about their parents again, put them in jail. It says that in the Bible, that things like that are going to happen. 
also the most adulterous generation ever in history. And it exists today. It says here, even so also outwardly appear righteous to men, you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, because you have built the tombs of the prophets and garnished them, the sepulchers of the righteous. You say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore you be witness unto yourselves and you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Many of the prophets have been killed in the past and there are many of the witnesses for Jesus that will be killed today. And in the future as well, martyrs for Jesus. The martyrs will be raised up to reign with Jesus. So it's really a good thing for me to live is Jesus and to die is gain. Fill ye up with the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape damnation of hell? He was saying this to his teachers, the leaders, even in his own worship centers. What about the Tower of Babel? If we go back in the Bible, there was a time that each man was their own little pathway to heaven. They had, they had arranged a way to get there. And they were promoting that. What did God do to all of those people that had their own ways to heaven to build? And they were trying to build this tower. He afflicted them with all these different languages and sent them all parts of the world. He was not happy with them. Every one of us have our own pathway to heaven that we have built. But have you spent some time in prayer? Because Jesus, he put, he, God put his blood in Mary, in the seed that planted in the womb of Mary into the egg, that then became a child, which became Jesus, and he was pure. His blood was pure. He was the only one that could be a sacrifice to get us back into immortality. He's the one that could pave our way out of hell. He went and I spent three days, three nights in hell and collected the keys. When I was crowned the queen of the south, I know this because that I claimed the blood of Jesus on my soul whenever Satan attacked me with what I had done wrong. And when that happened, all the angels came down around me, surrounded me, and I was taken up and out of there by Jesus. Now, this was in a dream, it was a very real dream. But here I am, the queen of the cell. I say I am because that's what happened. Jesus asked God if he could make me the queen of the cell. And God said on my watch, an allegory as an actress, so I can do what I want. So I'm playing the part, but I may very well be her. It depends on you. That means you're crying out your prayer for mercy grace repentance of your sin we all need to cry repentance and this is John Kapoor that's why I'm dressed in a trash bag right now because I'm trash you're trash our whole country is trash for all the bad things that we have done the only way that we can save ourselves under the God of Abraham is to cry pray and ask God to give us some grace to throw our sin as far as the east is from the west and remember it no more. And they go out and try to get other people saved because there's so many people that don't know their way into the kingdom of God. We have to be 
vocal, vocal about what is wrong that you are not to be doing, vocal standing against these things that are making our, our Ten Commandments in, in the schools no longer to be the way. They took the Ten Commandments out and now we have had teachers putting porn in. When your daughters cannot be raised without being raped and molested, what then? Because that the society is not going into the worship centers to learn how to behave morally speaking. And your children are now amongst very immoral people. Our country is in trouble because of the immorality here. And we can't do anything unless we return to God, we return to our knees, we return to our Bibles, we spend some time studying what God wants to tell us. And how can you if you have spent no time in God's word? Christ weeps over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that kills the prophets and stone them which sent unto thee, that were sent unto thee. How often would I gather thy children together, even a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, that you would not do this. Behold, your house is left unto you, desolate. That was a Holocaust. And you think that God will not allow that here? Well, all of you are running around saying to each other, have you taken the shot? Oh, you know, I'm gonna fear you if you haven't. I fear you that have, because this is conditioning for the mark of the beast. And you don't know what is in that shot. You know, it attacks the immune system. You're better off trying to conquer it on your own. That's what I did. I got COVID. And now my body is building an immunity to it on its own without any help from anybody but me and God. That's what I suggest to you. That vitamins and other things that you can take to protect yourself. But a liar, a thief, a profiteer who's making money off of you to give you something that's going to make you die sooner so they can depopulate the world. And that is what's going on now. You have trusted the wrong people. Now, your nurses, your doctors may not even realize that they're doing anything bad. There are people out there that do know what's going on. And they're laughing all the way to the bank. It's at your expense. I have a religious point of view, not a medical point of view, but I've done a lot of research. There are plenty out there who will tell you what I have just told you and it not be from a gossip or a, a religious point of view. You can find the information, it's on one American News and Fox News, more is being presented on those two channels. And plenty more will be out there because that our people should have enough. Take off your mask and put a hammer to it too. Because the mask is not saving your life. The fear is not of God. You know, America is the home of the brave. When did you stop being brave? Yeah. He says, for I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed he or me, I come in the name of Lord Jesus. Blessed. Blessed because that we're 
helping you bring you into the kingdom of God. You need Jesus to wash your sin away, make you right before God, cry over your sin, get on your knees, spend some time alone with God. He'll send the Holy Spirit and teacher to you and he will begin to train you. It's not your religion who will give you salvation. Many of your leaders were nothing but profiteers making money off of you. Some of them were very good people and did serve God. So I'm not going to say it's all, but I can say that there's plenty that just made a profit and they will not be found in the kingdom of God, no matter what they quoted in the Bible, because they didn't have a relationship with God. The Holy Spirit wasn't talking to them. I'm talking to you because the Holy Spirit told me to. I'm an introvert. You haven't heard from me. I was told I was the queen of the South 21 years ago. Nobody believed me. But today, God said people are being killed. You know, Crystal, you've got to say something. Calicea, you got to say something. Both names are my name. My parents called me Crystal. God calls me Calicea. So here I am telling you that we got a problem. And I ask you today to spend some time in prayer. Thank you for listening.